Hey everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and I am monkeying with this new device here. Let's see if I can get it in focus. Okay, silence that. Sorry for the fuss here. I want to get this right. All right, I think that's that's about good. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I left the device at home, or actually back in South Carolina. Let me bring this down a little bit further. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I have, um, and I need to do one more thing. Let me go ahead and move my, my fancy sign <laughs> back down. There was, for some reason, it wasn't appearing on this, this screen when I started, so... Um, Ah, technology. Yeah, I love it. I hate it. But um, anyway, glad to be back home again um, for a second try here. Let's see if we can get that. Okay. Um, just got back from, where did I go? The Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area. Um, my husband and I had a fantastic weekend. But before I go into all that, let me go ahead and see. I want to welcome you to Friday Fun Live. And this is the time where we just sit and chat and I, I show you some crochet things. I don't necessarily teach techniques during this time. So if you're brand new to, to my broadcast, just to let you know so that you're not disappointed waiting patiently to see me do some crochet thing. If you want to see some crochet stuff up close and personal, um, and I think in very clear ways, check out any of the number of 700 videos that are on my channel. I have many, many, many there for you to look at. Um, but please stay for a little while and visit with us. Um, so, so yeah, I'm back from Texas. It was actually my first time ever to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, we stayed at a nice hotel in, um, in Denton, if you guys are familiar with Denton, Texas, it's a very nice town, kind of in between, outside the big cities. And um, we just had a really wonderful time. Uh, it's really fun hanging out with my husband. Um, we always do off-road things. I mean, we don't follow the, the touristy things usually. He likes to get off the main drag and, and see what there is to see. So um, I'm hoping to put a behind the scenes video together for my watch subscribers. Oh, Archer Nace, thank you so much. You just pushed us up to $50, my friend. Okay, I know I'm jumping all over the place here. Let me go ahead and write that down because I don't trust my brain to remember that. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, okay, the super chat, we have designated that um, in this coming month, it's going to be donated to Shriners Hospital for Children. That's going to be our main focus when we, um, and our goal each, each time is a hundred dollars. And once we get to the hundred dollars, then, um, I pull out some kind of a silly song or something that's somehow crochet related, sometimes not, but, um, and, and we are able to cheerfully donate all of those proceeds, um, to a charity of, that I love, um, so anyway, so, um, and I'm hoping to be able to do some matching this month, uh, Lord willing. So whatever is raised in the super chat, I will match that 100% and go to, um, Samaritans, um, their field hospital for the Ukraine. I can't even talk about it very much right now. It's just very much on our hearts, as you know. Um, but anyway, getting back to Texas, um, wonderful state. I, I, I had only been there one other time in my entire life, and that was to El Paso um, just for a little while as we crossed over the border into, into Mexico to do some serving at the Rancho 3M that we also support um, with the uh, Super Chat. So that, that's the Children's uh, Orphanage and Christian School. So wonderful, wonderful organization there as well. So, um, but anyway, uh, just a little, oh, Stephanie, thank you. My goodness. Let me add that in as well. Now we, you've pushed us up to 70. Uh-oh. Um, let me add this to my, my thingy here. Um, I just don't want to forget. So anyway, Texas, we got off road. Um, love them or hate them. Um, they have a lot of, not a lot, but they had some, um, of these gigantic, 
windmills. I know they're somewhat controversial and I'm not going to get into that here. Um, but we were just curious what they really sounded like if you lived near them. So we went off road <laughs> and, and, um, got really close to, to where these are so that we could specifically record the sound of these. And, um, they are giant and, and where we were near the Oklahoma, Texas border, uh, they make a lot of wind noises. I didn't hear any of the mechanical noises that I expected to hear. Of course, it was very windy where we were, and these things were really moving and making a huge swishing noise, which, you know, was interesting. Um, not sure I'd want to live near that, um, but where they were in Texas, they didn't seem to bother anybody or anything. It's not like obstructing, you know, some extraordinarily be beautiful scenery that you might see in, you know, Scotland or um, or, or Ireland or something like that. But um, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um and what else was I going to say about that? Oh, yeah, I, I, I well, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't want to get into controversy, but I do know that they kill a lot of birds, and that doesn't make me real thrilled. But but anyway, they do produce some sort of electricity. Um, but anyway, it was interesting. My husband wanted to just, just you know, kind of neutral on this, just kind of wanted to see what they looked like up close and personal, so we did. And he also said, I want to get, I want to get close to see uh, some of the oil, uh, the oil uh, drill, the rigs that were that were operating there, and um, so we were able to see some of those in operation as well. Again, that was more in across the border um, into Oklahoma, uh, just across the border there. So that was nice. Um, we got to visit uh, a Chickasaw um, uh, Indian reservation. Not wasn't a reservation, but it was something that was set up by the Park Service that demonstrated how they how they live and some of the um, you know the ways they weave their fibers and stuff. So that was pretty interesting. And um, the main draw for us going to this uh, to Texas this particular time of the year was my husband and I have always been big. Um, NASCAR fans love us or hate us. I'm sorry. We're NASCAR fans. We've always followed that. I followed that since I was really in junior high school. So it was fun to go to a really big super speedway track like Texas Motor Speedway. But this time around, um, we went to see an IndyCar race on an oval, which was pretty spectacular. Um, if you get into racing at all, I mean, these, these cars run laps averaging around 220 to 229 miles per hour, which is absolutely crazy. Jane, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. You guys are just pushing me over the over the limit today. Um, and I'm not fussing about that. That's fantastic. Thank you for your generosity. Again, I'm going to be matching whatever this is that goes to um, Shriners. I'm going to match it to go to Samaritan's Field Hospital. So, um Anyhow, so anyway, we, we did the race and I, I can't wait to put this, uh, this behind the scenes video for my watch subscribers together. It's going to be an exclusive watch, um, dot bonnie baby dot com, dot, dot, dot bonnie bay crochet dot com exclusive, um, for my subscribers there. But, um, we got really amazing access to the garage afterwards. I mean, I was standing right there and the winning car, um, which was driven by this young kid from, from Tennessee was pulled into the garage right in front of us. We had to move out of the way so they can get the car in. And, um, we were had just right up close access um, to the winner's circle and, um, could see him doing the hat dance, which is what the hat dance is, is when the winners of a race, they have to wear the hats of all their supporters. So they have a lot of sponsors. So they take a picture of the hat with, you know, in the winner's circle, then they take that off real quick and put another hat on, take that off and then put another hat on. And, um, in NASCAR, they call it the hat dance. I don't know if they have that same name in, um, IndyCar or not, but anyway, lots and lots of interesting things there. And then, um, it was on, uh, Monday we were at our hotel room and we knew the weather was not going to be good. There was a front coming through. Uh, but it got to be kind of exciting. We didn't get to see any tornadoes up close, which I am more than thankful for. 
Um, really sad for some of the people um, who were affected by the storms. At one point, there were about five tornadoes on the ground within about a 20 to 25 mile radius of where our hotel was. So we were glad they kind of skirted around this. But again, you know, it's always sad when, whenever you hear of loss of life or, or, or property or damage. Um, but that, that area out there in the country is, I guess, what they have designated Tornado Alley, and I got to see why. Um, lots of open places for those tornadoes to, unfortunately, play. Uh, but we are glad to um, have been able to fly back the next day on Tuesday. Um, plane was able to take a northerly route around. Oh, thank you, Mimi. Uh, with our plane was able to take a northerly route around the front, so it wasn't too bad coming back. Um, and before, well, let me go ahead and thank Mimi again. Mimi, thank you so much. I'm going to add that to the list. So we're at three, five. Okay, we're at 90 right now. So we are, we are getting dangerously close um, to going over on that $100 so that we can do something silly next week. I don't have anything prepared now, but I am working on some, some fun things. So one other thing that we got to do in Texas was to visit a place called Dealey Plaza. And for those of you who know a little bit of history, um, I, I didn't really know the name of this plaza, but, but you know, we've all seen the picture of when our uh, president JFK was assassinated in Dallas. And, and we are able to, you know, kind of look at that from a historical perspective, stand where this happened and, and see the building um, where it, you know, it all came from. So, you know, kind of a sobering event, but yet we felt um, it was a historical thing that is important to, you know, to revisit. Um, reminded me often of, you may laugh at this, but um, my mom told me that story many times. It reminded me of her a lot. I uh, miss you, mom. Ooh, sorry. Uh, ooh, can't think of that too much. But um, she used to tell me stories. <laughs> of watching that and when she was changing my diaper, I was about six months old, I guess, when um when that was all transpiring. Uh whew, I'm not sure what's going on here, but anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm a girl. I'm allowed to be emotional sometimes. So um uh, reminds me of a reminds me of a cup that I saw in one of the stores there. It said uh um mood change coming in just a few seconds, be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> I just thought that was so cute and funny. But anyway, let me go ahead and say hey to some of you guys. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Dallas Fort Worth. Oh, and I forgot to mention the one thing that we did, it was really the highlight for me is we got to go visit the stockyards in Fort Worth. And if you've never been to Fort Worth and you can only have, oh my goodness, we just got pushed over. We just got pushed over. Thank you. Let me see. Thank you, Stephanie. So you have pushed us over the limit here. So now we are at $210. So I'll look forward to sending sending those, um, those funds to those two places. So thank you for your support. I, I really, really, really thankful for that. Um, so... So anyway, the, the stockyards, if you guys get to go to Dallas, Fort Worth area, you need to go to the stockyards. And it just so happened that we were there on Friday and Saturday, which were the two biggest days of the year. Um, we got to see some beautiful Mexican dancers in the parking lot. Um, we got to see um, a lot of longhorn cattle. I mean, incredibly longhorns on these things. I would not want to get near them. Uh, we got to have some fabulous food, including the chicken fried steak that was like bigger than anything I've ever seen. And I didn't leave any of it on my plate. I enjoyed every bite of it. Um, we got to have some, some beef ribs. I'm a big beef eater. So sorry about that. If, if that's offensive, I <laughs> just hold close your ears. I, I love beef. Didn't get a lot of it as a kid. It was always a super duper treat for our family when we could get beef. So it's, it's definitely uh, my number one treat, and Texas is the place for beef if you're looking for that. Um, but anyway, I'm boring you guys with, with the trip. It was a kind of a vacation, and the last day or so I've just tried to get organized. Needed a little bit of a rest from the vacation, but um, and I only had like a two, maybe a day and a half turnaround time from traveling uh, from South Carolina. Uh, so, so 
just taking a couple days here to really chill out and, and catch up on, on things and getting back into more designing like I love. Huh, well, that's a lot. But let me go ahead and say hey to some of you guys in the chat. There's a lot of you. I'm probably not going to get to everybody, but I am going to try. Um, Marie, so glad to have you there waiting. My faithful Charleston friend. And um, Dawn uh, from Yankton, South Dakota. She says she'd check in before she went to the doctor. I hope, hope things are going well for you there, Dawn. And um, Kelly, it's so good to, to see you from Tucson. She says the weather is nice here too. Um, when I get home, I think I will sit down outside in our yard. I would definitely do that, except that it's still a little chilly here. It's very, it was sunny here earlier. It's a little overcast now. Temperature is in the low 50s, so, you know, not too bad. Uh, not as warm as South Carolina and definitely not as warm as Texas, but I'll take it. It's not raining. It's not snowing and that's good. Um, Kelly says, I can't wait to see what you have in store for us today. Yeah, I got, I got a couple new things to show you guys and I'll get to that in just a bit. Um, she says she's crocheting an extra large dog sweater waiting for you to be live on video. Okay. Enjoy that doggy sweater. That reminds me, Becky is at the at the vet today just with a checkup with Noelle, her cat, and it looks like she's got a bad tooth, so her cat's going to get a little more attention from the doctor than what she expected. So, anyway, um, and Kelly Hart says she has a small dog sweater for, for $12. Kelly, if you want to post your, you know, your link or whatever in the group chat here, please feel free to do that. Um, hey, Bobby, I see you're in the chat. So glad that you can join us today, the book fanatic. And um, and Linda, Brett's mom, um, Good. she says, Good morning, Bonnie and fellow Yarnies from sunny southwest Chicago suburbs. Hope everyone is doing great. I hope so, too. And crochet down my way with Wanda. Hey, Wanda, I wonder where you are today. She's our, our trusty truck driving friend who keeps us all supplied with everything we need to survive pandemics and, and yarn shortages and such. Um, we have Glenda from Maine, um, and let's see, Patsy, and, um, and let's see, and Red Hooked, she says, um, gotta love all these 48 hour weeks. <laughs> oh my goodness. And, um, we have Michelle from Helena, Montana. Wow. Um, getting ready for work. So just listening instead of watching today. That's okay, Michelle. Um, glad that you can join us and you know work is a good thing it's a blessing um, and Sandra from Southern California says it's going to be a warm one today 85 degrees whoo that's that just sounds nice to me this Florida gal wouldn't mind an 85 degree day I could put the top down on the Miata and take a ride to the yard store <laughs> um, and Red Hook says, I work for a floral foam company. Huh, cool. Um, and Don is wishing they had some warm weather like that. Uh, everything just jumped here. Oh, Hannah's in the chat. Hey, Hannah, thank you. I didn't prompt you this morning, but thanks for being there for mom there. And um, uh, lots and lots of um, comments here. Sorry, guys. I am just way behind because I yacked on for like 20 minutes. 15 minutes there. Um, uh, way, 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 way behind. So, um, well, anyway, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just show you some stuff. Okay. And remind you guys, um, uh, deadline is coming for pictures of the throw of grace. I have the colorful one right here behind me, the one of many colors. And then of course, um, still haven't blocked the edging on this one, but, uh, the one that I, I made more recently out of a solid color. This is with a DK weight. It's a little bit smaller, but not that much smaller. So this is with the, the Hobie yarn called Amigo. So there we go. And I, I've placed an order for some, or yarn request, I guess is what I should say with them for the XL. Um, which would be their worsted weight yarn. So I'm going to have to be, I'm going to be working on a new design that will probably be released in the fall, probably late summer to fall, um, using another, another color of yarn that I found. They have this yarn, it, this color, it's like an emerald green, and that's what I'm going to be using just to let you know. 
I just saw that and I'm like, ah, that color looks amazing. So send me, if you have, if you're working on this project at all, even if the project is not completed, even if it's just the beginnings of it, please send me a photo. And if you could send it to me at bonniebay at me.com, the information is in the video description. So when we're done, you can, you know, copy that and, and it's in the video description below um, with the email and everything. But I'm collecting photos. The deadline is March 31st. I don't have that many photos. So please, 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 even if it's just in progress, send me what you have. And if you can send me a large, um, you know, when you send the resolution, send me at least a medium to a large on the resolution via email. Um, you don't, don't post it on the messenger in Facebook. I mean, you can do that, but I'm asking people who send it to me there to please send it to my email address because, um, when you post something in Messenger, it oftentimes um, consolidates or what do you call it, compresses the the image so that it's not nearly as clear as I would like it to be for the video. So if that makes any sense, you know, they just, it is what it is. So if you could send that to me, uh, and again, completed photos are fantastic, even just one in progress, please, please send it. This is called the throw of grace. And you know, even if you just start it, and, and just have a little bit with your picture of your yarn and crochet hook. I, I would love to include that in the showcase. And the showcase will hopefully um, air sometime in April. So April's going to be a busy month, though. So we've got some traveling, some traveling lined up. Let me go ahead and tell you about that. I'm going to be traveling. It's less than a month. Wow. Um, 19th of April, I'm getting on another jet plane if all things hold, and I'm going to be traveling to Loveland, Colorado. I'm going to be teaching three crochet classes. We still have openings in these classes, and um, you can sign up in person at the event if you'd like, but you'd be taking a chance on whether there'd be seats available. Um, there's a limited, um, I believe, 20 seats per class. I'm teaching a class on big and bold cables. And then I'm teaching two all-day class. That's going to be a three-hour class. And then I'm teaching two all-day classes. One is how to design your own scarf or shawl. Because, you know, some of these scarves and shawls, you know, depending on how big you make, they can be small or large, whatever you want it to do. So um, both of those class are full-day class. That class is a full-day class. We're going to talk a lot about design process. And you're going to begin your your design as well. You probably won't complete it during that time, but you'll at least know how many different ways of making these things too. And you're going to have swatches of, of several different kinds and shapes and, um, you know, triangles are many different shapes. And I show you how to change the angles and um, how to make them, you know, longer this way and shorter in depth, or if you want one longer in depth and shorter across, you know, how to do all that just it's a number thing and it's it's not that difficult but that's a six hour class with a, an hour break in between for lunch and then there's another class on how to design your own texturized poncho or stole um and really um i'm really excited about that class there are a lot of openings still in this class um but but definitely check them out there are links in the video description below and um the other good news is if you are interested in another crochet conference in July, this is the Crochet Guild of America or CGOA. It's going to be in New Orleans, July 20th through the 23rd. By the way, the Interweave Yarn Fest that I just told you about, that is April 20th through the 23rd, 2022. This is a live in-person class. And then the one, the CGOA is in July in New Orleans, July 20th through the 23rd. I'm going to be teaching four classes there. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. I believe these classes are going to fill up in even, even faster. I think much faster because this is the only all crochet conference that I know of in the U S. Um, and it's usually you know, attended pretty well. So, and a lot of people who are really gung-ho for signing up for classes. So if that's something you want to do, definitely um, check out the links below. Um, Signups are on. They're active right now. And there are many, many, many other teachers besides me teaching. So definitely check that out. 
And uh, my friend Jennifer Ryan is, is also teaching her Celtic knot classes. So if that's something that's interesting to you, definitely, you know, give her her classes a shot. Okay. Um, let me go back to saying hey to some more of you folks here. You've been so patient with me. Um, oh, we have Mimi. Hey, Mimi. So glad you could, could be with us. And, um, oh, wow. She says, um, crocheting and watching as I rest from surgery and lots of pain. So I'm glad you're going live right now to distract me. Thanks for taking time to do this. Oh my goodness, Mimi. So sorry to hear about that. Um, oh Lord, help Mimi. Give her, give her relief from the pain. We, we know what that's like. It, I, I, I just pray that you recover quickly from this. Um, ah, um, Wanda, uh, crochet my way. Wanda says, um, I've got to book my flight by the end of the month. Thank you. American airlines for the email. Yeah. Wanda, I think the sooner you book your flights for these, um, trips, I think the better, because I know, well, you know, you're driving that truck all day long. You know how much gas has gone up and it, it affects the, you know, the, the jet fuel just as much. So I've gone ahead and ordered my, my plane tickets early so that I could try to get the jump on that. Um, and let's see, we have um, Heather in our chat and Annette Burke and um, Alana. And let's see. Uh, let me see. I know I'm skipping some, some comments, but I'm trying to get everybody here. I want to say hey to everybody. You guys are so kind to be here for me. Um, we have Charlene. Uh, from Phoenix. Wow. Love Phoenix, my friend. Oh, I so miss my uncle and aunt. They're with the Lord now, but I love traveling to Phoenix and then driving up into the mountains there uh, of Prescott to visit them. And, um, ooh, um, we have Cindy from, from North Carolina and, um, Stephanie. She said, did anyone work up the kiss me? I'm Irish scarf. I need to start, but I only have 402 yards of a three weight. I don't know if that's enough yarn. Um, Stephanie, you know what you could do? This is just a thought. I don't have it with me here to show, show you, but if you have another yarn that's similar, that it's complementary to that yarn, just make stripes, you know, switch the yarn. Every time the, the cable switches, just switch to a different color and just make big and bold stripes. I mean, that's something you can do. Uh, I don't know that that's going to be enough DK weight yarn, um, but it will get bigger a little bit faster, you know, with the fingering weight. So, I mean, there's no rules on making these things and, you know, definitely check out your yarn stash and, you know, vary it with another yarn. I think you'd really like that. Um, I have Harriet in the chat. Hey, Harriet, thank you for your sweet comments this week online. And, um, yeah, Stephanie says, it feels so long since last Thursday. Oh, I know. <laughs> I feel like that was a lifetime ago, Stephanie. Uh, so much has happened since then, just with the travel. And, uh, you know, my, my system wasn't quite yet ready and uh, you know accustomed to Maryland. And I had gone from summer down in South Carolina to back to winter in Maryland. And then I get on the plane. And then, um, well, before we got on the plane, we lost... Wait a minute, did we lose an hour in Texas? or we? I don't know. And then we had the time change. And then um, I guess the time change was before I left South Carolina. And then we had the jet lag, you know, going to central time in Texas. And then and then coming back to eastern time. And I'm like, uh, I don't know what is up and down. Um, I, I can't imagine what the pilots must feel who travel internationally back and forth across, you know, major time changes. Um, I guess they've just got to be really much more resilient than, than what I can muster up these days. Um, we have Laurie in the chat now. We have Arts A Mimosa de Rose. Um, so glad you're here. And um, uh, let's see, Jen Jacqueline is in the chat. Um, she says it's foggy there in L.A. Uh, again, Archer Nace, thank you so much for your generosity. And Jody, so glad to have you here. And um, Jane from Westfield, so West Springfield, Massachusetts. Yeah, she said, glad you had a safe, fun trip. Yeah, it was it was a good time. Good time away. Always making memories with my, my sweetheart is always a good time. And, um, and Charlotte Bruce says it's cold in Ohio. 
Uh, yeah, I bet. Uh, that's where my folks were from, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, we have Linda Smith in the chat. And again, Stephanie, thank you again for your kind contribution. And um, thank you, Hannah, for answering in, in Spanish and doing that translation for me, my friend. We have Spring, the fiber enthusiast. Welcome to my channel. And um, let's see. Yeah, Swati. Hey, Swati, my LA friend. Oh, she says, going to miss most of this for work meetings, but I'll come back if it ends early. Well, I'll probably still be going through the chat <laughs> at that point, Swati. Um, and we have Annette and um, uh, Pat Dancers in the chat. She says, What's up for today? Well, let me go ahead and show you something else. Let me show you what's coming on Monday. Okay. This, this was fun for me to revisit this. This is a an older design, but I have not made a video for it yet. So I have the video. Let me show this to you. It's called the Sweet Baby Blanket. And it uses the economically priced Ombre by Red Heart Yarns. It's a super saver yarn. And I, I used one and a half um, scans or skeins or however you want to say it. I always say scans, but anyway, skeins of, of yarn. And I just love, love, love the colorway on this. And let me tell you, I do mention in the video when connecting in that second ball of yarn, don't feel like you're a slave to have to start where that ball of yarn starts. Go ahead and pull off the yarn that you need. You're not going to need all of the second one, I promise. You have plenty of yarn for this. Pull off to the point where it matches where you left off. See, you, you can't even tell where I connected the new ball of yarn because the colorway just stays so consistent. And it's because I took the time to pull off that extra yarn, roll it up neatly in a ball, cut it, put it aside, put it in your stash. If you want to make a baby hat or something like that, make something else with it. Or maybe even a smaller baby blanket. But you're not going to need all of the two, um, the two skeins of yarn. So it's called the Sweet Baby Blanket. And... Um, and this is really an easy pattern. I think I, I think a confident beginner can easily do this. But beyond that, for you seasoned crocheters out there that that just want a break from having to concentrate on cables or something like that, this is a lot of fun. It just flies. I think I did this in about two days, and that was just two relaxed evenings sitting in front of the TV with my mother-in-law in South Carolina, enjoying some of her game shows. So yeah, we were into game shows. I think that's one reason why her her mind is so incredibly, incredibly sharp. And by the way, she turned 93 this week and she this past week and she is going strong. She is still a blessing. Okay, that pattern is not one that I own. It is one that is in my published book with Leisure Arts called Self Striping Projects. And the picture is right there. Let me see if I can find another picture, a bigger picture. And here you go. Here's a larger size of what it might look in pink. And this, this ombre yarn by Red Heart Yarn is really nice. It's not super duper soft, but I think it's going to hold up really, really well. It has, it feels like it has a little more nylon in it, um, but it, it feels very strong to hold up to what a baby can dish out. And uh, they have this color in purples, in greens, teals. So they have this colorway in a lot of, of fantastic colors. And um, you could probably make this project, I'm guessing, for in the range of $10, maybe less if you get the yarn on sale. So, um, and, I, and I think you can even get this yarn at Walmart. I'm pretty sure that's where I picked this up. Um, so it's in the self-striping book. And let me show you some other things that this book also has it has backpacks, uh, hat, cowls. It also has another baby blanket. You may have seen this one on my channel. This is the rainbow baby blanket. This is um, another tutorial that's already up and it's got a lot more texture in it though. This is more of an intermediate pattern where the one I showed you, the sweet baby blanket's more of an easy pattern. Um, and this book also has one of my favorite designs, um, this, this texturized poncho. And that's using, again, all of the, the designs in this book uh, were specially designed using yarn that's automatically self-striping. Okay. 
So how many projects? This is self-striping projects, accessories for you and your baby. You don't have to have a baby to do this, to do these books. I mean, it just has the baby, um, the baby blankets, but I'm sure many of you know uh, people who are, you know, being blessed with uh, children. Um, and I, I do a, a ton of baby blankets for the new families in our church. So it's a lot of fun, relaxing. Don't have to worry too much about gauge and size and, and whatnot. You can just crochet to your heart's content on these projects. So be looking for the sweet baby blanket. This is already up on the watch.bonniebaycrochet.com for my subscribers there with, uh, I believe, five different languages. Um, so with the closed captions, if you're looking for that. And I will also be adding the closed captions um, to this when this releases on Monday. Um, and I also just wanted to make a special note for my watch subscribers. The email that was sent last night, it does include a special coupon just for you guys, okay? So do pay attention. If if you need to get the book, um, there is a special discount for you. Um, and, and no, I, I can't provide, just to let you know, I can't provide the pattern complimentary as I normally do just because I don't own the pattern and I do take my contracts with other publishers very seriously. I like to stay in keeping with the law and in their good graces. Um, so, so anyway, um, that's that. Um, what else do we have on the list here? Hmm. Um, we still have the Kiss Me I'm Irish scarf, which is right back here. Um, I'll go ahead and bring this to show you. The Kiss Me I'm Irish scarf. Again, this takes two hanks of a fingering weight yarn. Um, I used a total of approximately 800 yards. A little have a little bit left over. Probably had, I don't know, 40 or so yards left over. So if you don't have exactly 800, you might be fine. Um, and, and this is a lot of fun and I'm using a new, uh, cable combination that I haven't used before where you have one cable turning into two, into one, into two. So maybe you'll have fun working with that. And the stitch for the body of the stitch is a, an easy, uh, what did I use here? Yeah, I used the, the half that I used. Well, hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> I get confused sometimes because I make so many of these. Okay, yeah, this is the the um, half double crochet V stitch. So half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet is the body of of the um, project. That's not the cable. Can that sit there? There it goes. All right. Um, and what else do I have? Oh yeah, I told you about the interweave yarn fest. I told you about CGOA. And last week I mentioned, I don't have any more information, but last week I mentioned that the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival is a go for me. Yay, I'm really looking forward to that. This is will be the first time that I've even attended that, that festival, um, largely because I've had other responsibilities with my children in the home, uh, taking care of my mom or my mother-in-law or something like that. Um, I've just not been able to attend. But I'm really, I've always had my eye on this one. And this is just a few hours, maybe three and a half, four hours from my home. So I'll be able to drive there, be able to pack my car with a lot of stuff. And um, it's going to be at the Double Tree by Hilton at Green Tree, Pennsylvania, August 25th through the 27th. That's this uh, coming up this summer in 2022. These will be in-person classes. I don't have any details yet as to what I'm teaching or you know, what classes have been accepted yet or whatever. Um, but I do know that it looks like we are going forward with that. So I'm really super excited um, to meet some, you know, more local folks in, in my region of the country. So I hope, you know, uh, that that goes well. And I've heard really, really great things about this conference or festival. It's not a conference, it's a festival. So I'm pretty sure they'll have other things there too, like weaving and knitting and, um, all sorts of other fiber, I think even weaving, yeah, did I say weaving? Uh, all sorts of other fiber related um, things. And I think even spinning, learning how to spin yarn. So if you want to broaden your horizons, that might be the thing to do. And they also have classes like that at the Interweave Yarn Fest as well. It's not just crochet. Crochet is just a small part. Um, they're gonna have a lot of knitting classes, again, spinning, dyeing, whatnot, weaving, 
all sorts of stuff there in, in um, Colorado. Um, what else do we have? Okay, I have one more thing to show you. You've probably already seen it behind me. Um, this will be coming... I don't have a date for this, but it will be coming in the future. I have to do a lot of sizing and I need to make sure that that's correct and edited and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I've been working on this for, for a long time and even had some issues with the original yarn I was going to use. So when you see the video, you're going to see me starting with one color of yarn and then, um, you know, that all of a sudden I, I changed to this teal yarn, but I do warn you in the video. Um, I'm using it going to use a different colored yarn for the body of, of this just be aware um, but I ended up using this beautiful self striping colorful yarn and you can't see it probably from the distance there but there are lots of popcorns here um, in the in this top which is a nice shell and I used a yarn by a company called earth yarn u-r-t-h um, and this is all with um, merino superwash yarn um, I didn't like their color that I had for the rest of it as well. It was just a little too variegated from for what I wanted. So I switched to the body, you know, and the sleeves to the Malabrigo sock yarn. It's all it's also um, hand dyed, but the variegate variegation is slight in the yarn instead of you know so. Big. I didn't want it to be big and bold so that I had a bunch of stripes running around my tummy because that doesn't bless me and I know it won't bless a lot of you but um but that I think these colors I think would be great for spring if you live in a place where it's still cold in spring um, I think it would be fantastic for fall I think it would go either way I don't I don't I'm not a slave to what somebody thinks I should be wearing at certain times of the year if I like a color by golly, I'm going to wear it anytime I want. I know I'm stubborn and I'm only getting worse as I get older, which, which, you know, look out, <laughs> you've been warned. Um, but let me show you another thing that I did using this, a similar design. It is the top part is the same design. I did have to change the numbers on the bottom just a little bit and I, you're going to see strands. Okay. But this is my summer top. It doesn't look like much, <laughs> but when you put it on, it really does become more shapely okay this is um some knit picks fingering weight cotton which turned out to be a little thicker than i was hoping it would be so i may still revisit the the materials on this i'm still still thinking about other possibilities on the yarns i want to make sure that this is perfect or as close to perfect that i can get which you know sometimes can be a little off um, but I, I want to make sure that I am super, super excited about it before it goes live to you all. But I will say that making this for a summer top with a wider neck opening, ooh la la, and um, this does cover the top of your arms because I know a lot of us can be a little self-conscious about this part of our arm. I, I don't worry about it too much, but, but this will cover the arm a little bit. And I'm not going to put the edging like I did on the winter because I think I want this to be more open. And um, once I hide these strings, I think this is going to be really fun. So be on the lookout for the colorful popcorn summer top as well. So I may actually have these as two different patterns because the numbers with the different um, yarns uh, does matter. So, and, and that's just a good reminder too that when you're making a garment that you're going to wear and if you, you know, you're always free to substitute yarns and, and, you know, like for Afghans and things, it really doesn't matter so much. But when it's something that is wear, that is worn and in where the numbers do matter, um, you do have to be a lot more careful of that. So when I substituted this, this yarn, this green, um, it is really nice yarn, by the way. Um, it is listed as fingering weight, but it is much thicker than the Malabrigo sock yarn. Okay, it's a different fiber and much thicker. And so when I followed the exact pattern for this the first time around, oh my gosh, it, it was so much bigger than it needed to be. So I had to cut back on the numbers and as my shirt says, rip it and do again. And um, of course I had like 
lots and lots of fabric to rip out. And my, my poor mother-in-law's just sitting there looking at me like, oh, that's awful. You know, I'm like, well, it's just the day of work. What the heck? But um, anyway, life of a designer. So that are some things to look forward to. I do have another... I haven't shown it to you. I'm going to hold off. I do have another summer top coming as well. So um, I may have to put some of them into a leaflet. Um, can't promise that's happening anytime soon. But it's something that I'm thinking about. Because I think it would be really cool to have them all together into one pattern booklet. All right. Um, did I get through all my stuff already? Hmm. Oh, oh, I, I did. Oh, there's one more thing. I'll refrain from showing you which one, but I will give you a little teaser. I am working on another baby blanket that was published in this book. This is um, Contemporary Kelty Crochet. And let me see what the public, hold on a second. I want to check the publication date because I know we're coming up on, on 10 years for this book. Well, maybe not quite. Okay, it's eight years. It's um, copyrighted 2014, but I, I submitted everything 10 years ago for this book. And I, it's it's still my favorite. I mean, I, I don't know if that's, if that's not very humble, I guess, to say that. But for what it's worth, it's, it's still my favorite book. It was my first. And um, I think it, Noelle, um, who was, Noelle Riviera, who was um, my, my um, editor was actually new to this whole business and she did a fantastic job. I, I just a shout out to her. I uh, don't know where she is now or what she's doing. I know she had to find another job when, when the company um, F and W media went belly up a while back. But um, thankfully these books, uh, the titles were picked up by Penguin Random House. So they're available. If you're looking for a copy of this, um, I do have these now in my Etsy store since I'm back in town. I did activate um, the book sales once again. I turned them off while I was traveling because I would not be able to get them out to you guys very fast. So anyway, so I am going to be working on, I am working on another baby blanket that will be coming in April from this book. So, and there are a couple other designs that are already up on my channel. Now this was published years before uh, I was even thinking about doing a YouTube channel consistently like I am, but, but there are designs like this one, the Liffy and a Jiffy, which is just a very easy, um, well, it's not easy, easy. It does have the Celtic weave in it, but it comes together very quickly and is a really fun, uh, item to wear. I have, let's see, I have other projects. I have the Hialeah. The Hialeah Honey Baby Blanket, which is right there, is also um, on my YouTube channel already. There's another item I'm thinking about doing, um, and the Gaithersburg Stole is also, uh, the complete video tutorial is available for that. And um, let's see. And so I'll be working on another baby blanket from here. There are many, uh, oh, I did this one too. So the Dual and Delight sweater wrap. That is a multi-video tutorial, but that is also uh, on my YouTube channel. So there are a lot of things in this book um, that have already been um, made into videos. So I'm just, uh, uh, just gonna keep you guessing. It's not, oh my goodness, it's not easy to guess. This is funny. Picture of my kids, wow, this was, this was taken back in 2012. And my youngest son, Joseph, is now married. Becky and, and, and Caleb are also now married with the family. So, you know, how, how quickly things can change in such a short period of time. But, but anyway, just wanted to let you know. And if, again, if you're a watch subscriber, um, you do get a special discount. Look at the email that was sent last night and just you know keep a note of that because that's going to be a perpetual discount for you guys just indefinitely. I just um, not trying to force anybody into buying any books or anything like that, but you know for those of you who who like to work with a written pattern, 
um, they are available. That's mostly what I want to make you aware of. I, I generally don't draw too much attention to those. But I'm going to go ahead and draw attention to one more. Um, this is a small book. This is Winning at the Fair. It's, you could probably read it in an hour, hour and a half. And uh, we are getting to that time of the year where you can enter things in your local uh, county or state fair. Uh, many of you may be a little intimidated by doing that, and I totally understand that. But um, this kind of walks you through, um, you know, some of my experience at the Montgomery County um, Agricultural Fair in my area. I've also ex had experience um, entering things at the South Carolina State Fair back in the 80s when I lived near there. I actually worked not too far from the fairgrounds, and um, I, I was really thrilled to be able to enter some things and, and get some ribbons from that fair as well. Um, and also the Dade County Youth Fair when I was a youth, I don't qualify for that anymore. Um, back when I was in junior high school and high school, I would enter my crochet things into the fair there and, and would do, do very well. So um, check that out. It talks about how to prepare your projects to be, you know, if we're judging, it, it gives you a list of what the judges are looking for. Now, if you're already experienced doing this, you don't need this, okay? But if it's if you're the one who's just, oh, I'm just a little scared and nervous about that, you shouldn't be. And you know, even if you don't win, it's not a big deal. I mean, and they usually give a lot of different different ribbons. Um, so if you have any excellence at all in your project, I'm sure it will do fine. Um, but I just give little hints, <clears throat> excuse me, on how to. Um, you know, maximize your chances and also how to put it in perspective. Um, if nothing else, it will help you to just become a better crocheter. Um, it helped me. It challenged me. And, and this is this whole process of, of finally, finally, after years, it really took me years of trying, you know, getting the best in show. I mean, that was always my dream is the big purple ribbon. And then, you know, one year it's like, boom, you know, I, I was shocked really. Um, because there are usually a lot of good, excellent um, entries at our particular fair. And also, there's I think there's some information, too, on how to maybe get involved in volunteering. You might be able to meet a lot of people that way, and, and you get to see firsthand the things coming in and, and the quality, and um, um, you can learn a lot from that as well. I think this book is 5 or $6. Um, it's available on Amazon. It's also in my store. Um, for a limited time, uh, or at least until until the books sell here, till I till I deplete my uh, my stock. So anyway, let me get back to saying hey to some more of you. I know I've dropped way off here. Um, Jane, thanks again for your 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 um, contribution there. Um, and Hannah, thank you again for for translating the comments. And Terry Redmond, hey, it's good to see you in the chat, my friend. And, um, yeah, Kelly wants to know, says, I'm, Easter is coming. Are you doing anything for Easter? Um, other than the usual looking forward to the time of worship, Kelly, I don't really have any special, you know, projects or anything, but I know I see a lot of that coming into my email. You may want to check, uh, Annie's. I know they do a lot of, you know, special little, little crafty things. Um, yeah, I don't really get into the Easter bunny and the egg thing. I mean, I'm not against it or anything like that. It's just that I, I haven't even had time to think about things like that. Um, I do have some projects that have already been out there with, you know, with the Celtic cross and things like that. Um, I would like to do something special for Easter. This just was not the year for me to really accomplish that. Um, but I do just love, you know, love the holiday and look forward to celebrating with my local my, my local church home. Um, yeah, Stephanie has a good point here about donating. So I don't donate too much online unless I feel very secure. Um, oh, thank you, Stephanie. Um, yes, I, I will say that the places where I, I, I totally understand that. I, I am really, really, totally, totally get that. And I say no probably a thousand times for the times that I do say yes. And I will say that the Rancho 3M is a place I have been to, and my daughter Becky and I have ser served there in, in um, 2006, one hot summer I've told you about. I know that they're there. They're doing a great work um, with those children, 
keeping everybody safe, even in a very dangerous part of the world. Um, and, and Shriners, I trust imperatively because of friends that we know, like, like, um, Bobby and, um, my, my mother-in-law, Mrs. Barker and, um, uh, Esther, one of our, our moderators, they have all been patients there over the years at Shriners Hospital, no bills, just, you know, they're just served freely, which is fantastic. Um, and, and I've worked with Samaritan's Purse for many years too, doing the shoe boxes, you know, each year. I haven't done it in a while, but when my kids were young, we would, we would load the van with shoe boxes and <clears throat> ship them out. I really wanted my kids to have a vision, you know, for, for Christmas is for giving. It's not for, I mean, we do get stuff at Christmas, but you know, I just wanted them to have the vision for, you know, thinking of others because that's, I want them to be blessed and they will be blessed far beyond any gift will ever bless them when they're thinking of others. So, um, and, and I do know Samaritan's Purse, we, we have given to them regularly. So I trust those. So that's, that's, that's why I picked those. I know there are many other great ones out there, but yeah, like you, I'm a little leery too. And I, I generally, you know, don't just freely hand things. I just want to know that, that I'm supporting something, um, with integrity. So thank you for, for your trust. And I, I take that very seriously, and, and let me say this too, um, I get, especially now that the channel has thankfully grown, We're, we hit, we've surpassed 213,000 subscribers, which is like so many more than I ever thought we would get to. My goal was never to, to you know, hit the certain number, but was to just make what I do available to people. That's, I, I wanted to keep this craft alive. Um, but I get on a daily basis now, um, at least one, sometimes two per day, people asking me to work with them to advertise things to you. And um, I, I try to be very nice. Um, some of them I just ignore because, quite frankly, it looks spamish and scamish. And it, it, if someone wants to work with me, they at least have to speak and write in a, in a professional way, I mean, at least be nice to me, address me as a person and not just as quick money. And, um, so I just want you to know if I ever say, you know, I want you to meet this person or, or I'm, I, I really like something or this or that or the other thing, it's because I'm giving it up. I'm giving it a lot of thought. I'm not doing this because someone's offering me money to, to have access to you. I, I really despise that sometimes, I hate to say, but um, there's a lot of that out there. There are some really good organizations and stuff, but even some of those, some some top things that I could make like $500, boom, like that. If I just, just persuade you to go check them out, and I'm not going to do that. And I, I just want you to know that I, I trust, um, I won't, don't want our bridge of trust to be broken over a few dollars that I could make on something. And, um, you know, I'm not against making money at all. I mean, I, I, we all need it to live and, and, and it's, if you can do it in a, in a good way, you know, that's wonderful. Um, but I just want you to know that, that I get a lot of emails from all sorts of things that want me to endorse it so that I can advertise to my friends. And I've just had to say, thank you for your offer, but unless it's something I'm totally in love with and use myself, I am not going to bring that to my friends. I just, I just don't do it. Um, and thankfully I haven't needed money that badly that I need to do that. And I hope that that day never comes. Um, I can live pretty simply. I have in the past. Um, it, it's not a big deal. I mean, money is a blessing, but I, I want to be able to be content either way. Um, Paul talks about that in the apostles, but in, in the epistles, I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, sorry to go off on that tangent, but, but I just wanted to let you know, I mean, and if there is anything that I'm pushing or you feel like you want to speak to me about that, email me, bonniebayatme.com. If you're saying that was a little pushy, Bonnie, you know, you need to back off. Let me know because I, I, I need to know that too. Um, but you know, if I, if I'm wholeheartedly a believer in something, you know, I will bring it to you guys. Um, but again, never, ever, ever, ever feel like any pressure that you have to run out or do something to like that to buy something to support me. You don't, not at all. 
and um and like like even with the knit crate yarn you know it's nice it's it's nice yarn but if you don't if you can't afford that or you don't need that no problem at all they just asked me to evaluate it so i evaluate it and there it is so um and it just so happens that everything they have sent me has been a really good quality so i'm not afraid to share that with you but no pushing at all from me and if again if you feel that let me know that i i need to know that um all right well let me let me see if i can catch anybody else i see somebody there in in the lettering is arabic thank you for being there i'm sorry i don't read the, even enough to read your name but thank you for being there and um and i will be translating those comments to find out i just wanted to let you know you're very welcome here um we have margita hey margita thank you for being there today and being so patient waiting on me and sandra says yeah the stockyards are a fun place to go yeah they really are it was it was crazy i will say it was crazy there at the stockyards but um and i found this store that i absolutely fell in love with i didn't see anything that i could bring home but um they had all these things made of, of leather cow hides because they have a lot of cow hides and things through there it's a stockyard that's where they sell the meat um so if you're a little squeamish about that i'm sorry um but that's that's life um but anyway um they had a lot of beautiful things there and there was a, a jacket that I, some jackets they had there. I really wanted them to fit me. And I tried, but I couldn't get any of them to look good and fit me. But um, they had lots of beautiful leather fringe. And I'm like, oh, these were so pretty. And yeah, they were pricey. But my wallet was safe because they just didn't fit. My husband's like, no, that doesn't look good. So I'm like, okay, thanks for being honest, dear. So we, we moved on. Oh, thank you, Linda. <laughs> she says she loves my shirt. Um, yeah, my son Hudson, the, the pilot guy. Um, he designed this for me a couple years ago, so it's been my life the last couple weeks doing uh, doing some stuff. Um, and Jan says, when in Texas, go big or go home. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. Everything is big there. I mean, the warehouses, the roads. I mean, I came back home and I'm, I felt cramped, even though Maryland's roads are great, but... Um, but the Texas were like, whew, really big and wide and uh, a lot different than any place I've been. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really nice to see. Uh, one thing about Texas, Jan, I loved is, is just seeing the whole sky. And even when we got the storms, uh, one thing I said to my husband a few days ago, a few days before the storm, I said, you know, I know this sounds weird, but I kind of wouldn't mind seeing a storm develop. Because I remember years ago when we were in Florida, um, visiting family and so forth, and you can see the storms develop from way far off, especially if you're in a hotel up, you know, where we were at about 10, 10 floors up. And I just remember it was just a beautiful thing just to see this thunderstorm, thunderhead, this was in Florida, build in a distance and then come closer and closer and all the blues and purples that change in the sky. I know that sounds weird to some of you, but this is the way designers think. Um, but we did get to see that in the sky, although in Texas looked really scary, it was it was beautiful. I mean, it was just beautiful to see all the different colors and and the intensity of it as it developed. Um, but I am, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of, of hail and, and uh, tornadoes, not, not at all. Not after having driven through in one um, last year, that was not my idea of fun. Um, but, but anyway, yeah, go big or go home. <laughs> Definitely, Jan. And um, thanks for being there, Ruth and, and, and Jennifer. Uh, she says, good evening to everyone from the UK. Yes, thank you for being here. I guess you guys are getting getting your supper or dinner time. And um, and Joanne from Toronto, Ontario. Um, <laughs> Mimi says, I'm definitely somewhere near the front of that train too, Hannah. Um, and we have Grace in our chat. Thank you for being here, Grace. And, and Angie. And Hannah, thanks again for answering our, our friend in Arabic there so that she feels a part. And, um, yeah, Sandra says uh, to Jennifer, I hope all is good in Ukraine. Well, we know it's not, Sandra, but we can just still keep praying for those people, you know, just, just, just for that situation to resolve. And we have Amanda 
Uh, says, first time joiner. Hi from Trenton, Ontario. Sorry it took me so long to get to your comment. Um, and we have, let's see, we have a lot more comments here. Um, Lynn, hey Lynn, thank you for your sweet comment, my, my friend. You are always so encouraging. And we have Diane, uh, says, just came upon your channel. So hey, from Prince Edward Island, Canada. Wow, thank you for joining us today, Diane. And um, we have a name that I can't remember. It says, okay, I'm not even going to try to, but I think, thank you, Hannah, for, for answering and, and for chatting with our friend there. And we have Benzi Craig from the UK, back, just came back from Ukraine, and I go back about a week or two. Oh, my goodness. Well, Benzi, we will pray for you. You will go on my list. Hannah, if you could add that. Let me, let me add that to our list by name because, um, hold on a second. Give me a second to do this, guys. Oh, where did it go? I'm just going to put it in my regular thing here. Hold on, hold on. Ugh. Where did it B E N Z I. We will definitely keep you in our prayers, my friend. You guys are on our hearts. And um, Archer Nay says, I made some Ukraine colored scarves from your mom's pattern. And there are some patterns online for crochet sunflowers. I'd like to make the baby and pet themes for those poor people. Archer Nays, please send me some of those photos. I would love to share those with others just to show what you're doing to support them. I've thought about doing that too, but just, just haven't had the time to to go pick up some yarn like that. That is a great idea. Um, and Terry Revna, thank you for your prayer there for everybody. Um, and for me too. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. We have ooh, lots of lots. We have Alana. Um, she says, I'm fairly new to crochet and you're one of the designers who got me into crochet. Yay! Goal achieved. Um, I'm wondering what events and resources are available in the California area. I'm limited to travel and close to home. Well, Alana, um, there is something called Stitches. Um, if you just put that into Google search, there is a, a conference. Uh, when is it? I think it's in November, coming up in November, and it's in the San Diego area, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not going to be able to even try to go to that. Um, I've never been to Stitches, but I know it's huge. And, and if you want to be overwhelmed by all kinds of fiber things, you can check that out. I know there often are crochet designers there and knit designers and spinners and weavers and anything that anybody does with yarn, it'll probably be there. I, I can't vouch for that in a big way because I've never been to it personally. Um, but I do know that that is a big resource. So check out, I think it's Stitches West um, 2022. So, excuse me, good grief. <laughs> so if you can go ahead and um, check that out. Um, and you can always do a, a Google search on, you know, yarn stores in your area. And if you look for the yarn studios, the, the places that are uh, unlike, you know, that are smaller than the Michaels and big box stores like that, you might be able to find some decent instruction there locally if you're looking for in-person instruction. Uh, we call those our local yarn stores. And, um, you know, just do a quick Google search for your area. and You should be able to find, you know, hopefully find quite a few in your area there. Um, let me check Hannah. Actually, Hannah, I'm so sorry, honey. You've probably been sending me questions and I <laughs> I have ignored you oh my goodness um yeah let's see um the the lady not Nana for, um and her comment was in Arabic says I wish all videos were translated into Arabic um your work is more than wonderful and I want to learn everything from you please tell her if you haven't already Hannah that all the new stuff that I have coming out is including Arabic translations. Um, we are doing everything from October 2021 going forward. We'll have the Arabic and I believe French. We added French a little bit after that. And we'll have Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Um, we did have 
Chinese on some of those, but notice there was no traffic in China from China because China is not a free country, unfortunately. Um, and neither is Russia right now. So, which is again, very sad for those people who are good people in both of those places. But, um, anyway, so please tell her we are adding it. It's going to be a while before we, I don't know that we're going to ever be able to go back and do all of the other older designs. There are so many of them, but, um, until I can hire a full-time person to do that, I'm not going to be able to do that just yet. But anyway, um, thank you for, for translating for me. And thank you, Amanda, for joining us. Thank you for, for joining uh, our, our chat today. And um, Mary Snyder wants to know if I've taught in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, Mary, I have not. Um, I don't know of a... I mean, I've attended and participated in the Mer the Frederick Fiber Festival as a as a bookseller, um, but not, uh, I don't know of a place there. There was one store that I visited once and they didn't want anything to do with me because I'm a crocheter. <laughs> it's the one downtown. I won't mention the name. Um, don't mean to be a bearer of bad news, but the lady wanted nothing to do with me. She's like, Oh, we don't have crocheters here. And so I'm like, Oh, so I just figured, well, she didn't need my business to buy her yarn. So I was like, okay. I can know where the door is. You don't have to show me. <laughs> um, so that was just really weird. But anyway, so I've kind of avoided that store. But if you know of another place in Frederick that is looking for something like that, please contact me directly. I'm I'm all ears. I just know there's one downtown that that made it clear that they don't do crochet. So I I just I don't do snobs. <laughs> so um, I, I I love both crochet and knit. I don't see why we have to argue about it but um, anyway but but do contact me and let me know um I, I i love to to meet local people um the closest my closest um uh, favorite local yarn store to me is in columbia maryland which takes me 45 minutes to drive there so it's no further than going to frederick maryland just a different direction um and Kelly Hart, okay, getting back to the extra large dog sweater. Um, yeah, if you if you need my email, Kelly, it's uh, bonniebay at me.com. Please send me a picture. I'd love to see. Um, and Kelly wants to know if I'll be doing a class on one of my tutorials this year. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. I have lots of tutorials. Um, if I have any uh, special classes, um, they will probably be uploaded onto my watch channel. So I do have the design your own scarf class up there and I'm going to be adding the poncho design class to that very soon. I just haven't had a chance to complete that yet. Um, okay. And Stephanie wants to know, is there a central location to purchase my patterns written or diagrams? Um, the patterns that are not in my, my published books, are available on my Lovecraft store. And um, again, that information is in the video description. So um, whenever new patterns come out, it's usually, it's always in my Lovecraft store, unless let's, you know, like the, the baby blanket that I mentioned earlier um, is in a leisure art booklet. So I don't have the rights to resell that, um, that pattern. So it is in my book, um, self-striping projects and those books uh, most of those books are in my Etsy store and again video the links are in the video description below um, there are some additional leisure art books that are out there that I don't have in my store you can always go to leisurearts.com and take a look there or on Amazon I do have an author's page on amazon.com you can always check that out and and quite frankly, the, the prices on Amazon are the lowest available that I'm aware of. Um, some of my books, not all of them, but some of my titles do ship free with free shipping in the U.S. So that might save you a little bit, you know, if you can always do a comparative shop with uh, Amazon or or your, your other favorite online book distributor. Um, and the name of the sweater behind me, again, this is the colorful popcorn pullover it has not been published yet it is in the works so you guys this is the first view anyone has had of that um, it's probably going to be several weeks before i get that completed as far as you know written published edited etc 
And Linda Murray has an excellent question. Wants to know, have I ever thought about teaching a class on Craftsy? Um, yes and no, Linda. Um, I, I actually have taught with another organization like this before. Um, it wasn't Craftsy. It was another one that was associated with my publisher when I, when my books were with Interweave Press. Um, I forget the name of it, but um, it they just didn't do that well. And I, I don't think that they had that much of a reach. I know Craftsy has a much larger reach, but um, what I've chosen to do instead is to start my own watch channel where I can offer exclusive content um, to my paid subscribers. So, uh, and, and also a lot of the videos that are on YouTube are also on my watch channel, but they are interruption free. There are no, no commercials, no spam. Uh, I'm not trying to get you to buy other things that are totally non-related. You're not accosted by all that other stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. And that's why when you see my website too, I could be making more money by having it filled with advertisements of all sorts of stuff, but I've chosen to keep a clean look to it, to simplify it. The only time that you'll see anything will be maybe some of my titles on the sides. I don't want to have, you know, all these other distractions and pop-ups and assault you with all these things. I mean, that's just, it's just the way we've decided to roll. And I know it's not the most profitable way to do things, but it's the way we want to do things with Bonnie Bay Crochet. Um, but thank you for asking about Craftsy. Um, I know a lot of people who teach with them, and I, I may I may talk with them. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I may actually um, talk with them. I have friends, my really good friend Susan Lohman. I believe she has some classes with them, and I think she teaches with Annie's as well. So I, I may talk with them and just see, you know, how how that's going, and you know, get a feel for it from my friends who who have experience with that. But but right now I, I I'm. My plate is pretty full, but thank you for asking. Um, all right, so I am have gone way over the time, but um, but anyway, um, I, I do have something else I'd like to read. Oh, we have Crochet Me Pink in the chat. Thank you for being here, and Linda Jones. Um, oh, thank you, Linda Jones, for your sweet comment. I try. I am just. I am just another sinner saved by grace. I, I promise you. I have. I have rough edges, just like everybody else. But um, I just. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm very much aware of the mounds that I've been forgiven. Uh, probably a lot that I'm not aware of that I've been forgiven too. I, I'm sure there's a ton of that. But um, just, just. I just want to. I just want to keep your trust. You know. I just want to. Keep that bridge of, bridge of trust between us strong. I don't want to ever break it for, for any, any, anything, any small gain. It's just not worth it to me personally. Um, <laughs> Jane, Jane says, I volunteer full time for Bonnie. Um, shame I'm in the UK though. Oh, Jane, I would take you up on that, my friend. Um, but wow. Yeah, I, I could certainly use the help at times, but uh, I do. also don't want to take a, Take advantage of anybody. If I if someone works for me, I want to be able to pay them well and pay them to keep them forever. Um, so anyway, uh, all right. Um, I think I'm going to let's see. Brat's mom has a comment here. I have tons of classes on Craftsy, but they have changed the way the videos play. They stop at every chapter instead of playing right through, where I can stop when I. When I, where I could stop when I need to, not too crazy about it. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just not familiar enough about Craftsy personally to say either way, but I know they advertise a lot. I get them the emails practically every day, so you know, I'm, I know it looks like a really great deal, um, but I, again, I don't really know because I don't, I don't know what they're teaching. I, I don't know the details, and. Quite frankly, um, from a business point of view, I really don't want to be competing with myself in another area too, because I, I really want to encourage the watch channel because I think it's a good deal. I am giving uh, or, you know, using uh, complimentary patterns where I can, um, but, but anyhow, 
Um, there is one thing I wanted to read you, and it looks like I left my book, my, my good book, in the other room. So I'm going to pull this up online because I know exactly what I want to read to you. Um, this week I was reading a very familiar passage. And most of you, as soon as I start reading this, you're going, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. I've heard this a million times. Even people who don't read, who don't read the scriptures um, will be familiar with what I'm about to read. It comes from uh, Paul's epistle to the Corinthians and chapter 13, which is the way of love. And when Paul wrote this, I have to say, when Paul wrote this to the church, it was a corrective word because they were not doing what he says for them to do. Um, and I, as I was reading this, um, I, I was really profoundly um, impacted in, in the light of all that transpires on social media, you know, both in the past and in the present, you know, people really quick to want to shoot each other down with words and, um, and act like a bunch of know-it-alls. I mean, I, we're all guilty. I, I, I know I am tempted to want to do the same, but I was just struck again and again, and, and I'm going to read through this in its context, but the line that kept hitting me in the head and, and it, it just hit me in a way that I hadn't been before is he says, he says, I only know in part. And, and this is a man who was brilliant. I mean, he was brilliant and, and he was a, a very godly man, a, a man of very much aware of his sin in the past, I mean, he at one time was a persecutor of the church. And um, so, and he's even saying at the end of his life, towards the end of his life, I only know in part. And and I just, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. And um, hopefully it'll speak to all of us. But, you know, I, I read this this week, like I said, and it just, it just really brought me to tears. I hope I can get through it. Okay, and this starts with verse 1 of chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, there's a lot of ifs there, so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, this is talking about the eternal life with, with the Lord in heaven. When the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So much room for growth for me, for all of us, I know, in, in that. I mean, it's just... Oh, I mean, I have, I have, I'm like a baby in this. I mean, so many opportunities to grow uh, with that chapter, but, but, but just, 
just love reading that just to be reminded of you know the hope that's there and um and of the growth that that can happen i mean we, we, it's, just, it's just overwhelming but anyway um oh denise says that's the scripture that she had on her wedding program yeah that's very very good one to remember especially with marriage when we get to know each other a lot better than we probably want to sometimes but but yeah um well, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and Lord willing, I will be here next Friday looking forward to showing you more things and um, just looking forward to hanging out with you guys. And again, thank you, Hannah, for being our moderator and for keeping us all safe and keeping the chat uplifting. And you guys have a wonderful week. God bless. Bye-bye.